Hi guys, this is the Driftwood Boat Blog and stay tuned because we are cruising to Enniskillen and Loch Erin. So thank you very much for tuning in guys. If this is your first time visiting the Driftwood Boat Blog, I'm Harry. And I'm Marion. This is our boat Driftwood and this channel is all about cruising the Irish waterways and sharing that experience with you. So this is, what time is it now? It is 20 past nine in the morning. The forecast was for a lovely hot sunny day with a couple of thunder showers. I'd love a thunder shower now because it's misty, it's cold. And uh, I'm in my shorts, expecting lovely weather and it just ain't coming about. So maybe it'll clear up later on. This morning we woke up to a lovely sight. We woke up to the sight of, <laughs> of yoga on the jetty, but not just any type of yoga. This was naked yoga by middle-aged man. It was, it was not a nice thing to see. Not a pretty sight. Not a pretty sight at all. But um, on the upside, he was quite flexible. But uh, yeah, no, it wasn't a pretty sight. Yeah. Yeah, you can, I, know, I know it's the, this is the thing about a mental image, isn't it? So once you see a mental image, you can never unsee it again. <laughs> Suffer along with me, so. <laughs> That's in a shore, and we're going to head up along here. That's the channel we're kind of navigating at the moment. That's what it looks like. As you can see, it's still a bit dull and grey, and it's still kind of chilly. Still have a fleece on me. We had to drop the mast to go underneath Lady Craig Avon Bridge. <laughs> it was only about an inch in it. Only about an inch. We probably got a squeezed through and just taken the anchor light off the top and if you might have seen in a previous vlog that wouldn't be the first time we did that we did that down on the Shannon just above Tarman Barry at the the Bordnamona bridge we passed underneath that and uh, we shouldn't have done so here we are guys heading northbound on Loch Erin. I woke up at so oh, silly o'clock this morning and I've uh, been up mad early. We pulled out of the mooring that we were in last night at, a, I think, about half eight this morning. Good morning. We're just on uh, Loch Erne, approaching Nan's Island at the moment. It's There's markers littered everywhere. <laughs> there's islands everywhere. It's really hard to know which way to go. And um, we have a depth sounder on, on Driftwood. And you would imagine that a depth sounder would be a very useful thing to have and that would stop you going aground. My theory on depth sounders is they're not that useful. They don't work very well in shallow water. They work really good in, in deep water, but the shallower the water, the less functionality you'll get out of a depth sounder. If you do go aground, a depth sounder is useful because it will confirm the fact for you, you but there's not much else it'll do. I turned off the depth sounder because it's it just puts your heart sideways because it's much shallower than you really think. And uh, I suppose that's kind of indicated by the number of islands you have and the amount of markers that you have. Yeah, it's um, it's a very hazy morning. Thought the sun was going to come out. We had a fabulous week. Mm. The weather was fabulous up in the 25, 26. But we were both working, so. Yeah. And, and this is the long weekend. Yeah. Well, if you remember, to half five yesterday, uh, yesterday, this is a Saturday. Half five on Friday when we finished work. What happened? Start to train. We had a thunder shower. Mother Nature never passes up an opportunity to laugh into our faces. <laughs> Island is a lovely spot. Quite a bit of litter about though. There's no bins and unfortunately people come here they light a barbecue or maybe light a pit fire and then they kind of leave all the rubbish, rubbish behind. Which is, it's a pity because if you can bring it with you, you can bring it home again. So now I'll just show you where we are. There's Nan's Island. We've come up here, we've gone through these few markers here, and we're at this spot here where it says watch your course. Can't see any of those markers there. Don't know which islands are which. There you go. It's a little bit misty, but still and all. 
So I'm just going to, I picked a point on the horizon, just going to keep heading towards that. I know I'm in kind of clear water here, and I reckon before we get to the shore, we'll see a marker. That's the theory. Well, my plan to head to that spot on the shore, and hopefully markers will come into view. It, it did work. They're in view now, <laughs> and we're heading along quite a kind of, and even though it's an expanse of water, we're heading along a narrow channel through it heading up to a bridge they call the viaduct and from there we'll head up towards Balnalak and then Enniskillen will not be too far ahead of us but uh, yeah there was a couple of squeaky bottom moments there because we weren't too sure where we are there's a bit of a mist out it's very difficult to spot these urn markers uh, if, if it's a grey day like this because you've only got a semicircle, one half of it is white, the other half is red. You might see that red bit, you won't see that white against any kind of a grey background. And that was a bit of an issue for us, but we didn't go aground, nobody was killed, no damage, and we got there. But everywhere I look around, even though it's open, expansive water, you can see reeds and bits of logs sticking up, so it's all very shallow. So I'm kind of taking it nice and gently. I'm making sure to double check all my markers. Each marker here has a number on it, which kind of, you would imagine, makes it easy to identify where you are. And it does, except it can be like a four digit number. It could be 23A1, 23A2, and so you have to get right up close to the marker. Then you go back to your charts and it does confirm where you are. But, um, whereas on Lockery, you have a number of markers and I think they're numbered from 1 to 11 and it's it's easier <laughs> easier to identify the markers but then again I think it's a deeper lake it's it's probably quite shallow here so you need an awful lot more markers sorry to be looking around guys but I'm just trying to make sure I don't wander off the channel but uh, meanwhile <sighs> Marina's dropped out a cup of tea to me Oh, that's much needed. That's uh, not a bother, we'll get through there. There's a car going over. That antenna there might rub, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. You lazy cow. Now there's a four word sentence with the word dead and wake in it but yet it has nothing to do with death or with wakes There's our first glimpses of Enniskillen and I think it's more or less around the bend here so quite excited it's a long time since I've been to Enniskillen well it is by boat anyhow I've been there by car but that's nothing like as exciting as coming by boat
So the Earn Navigation consists of two lakes and three towns. The southernmost end of the navigation, you have the town of Belt Herbert. At the northerly most point in the navigation, you have the town of Belique. And right here in the middle, you have Enniskillen. Enniskillen kind of acts like a bit of a hub for the whole waterway system. In between the two, you have the upper lake at the southern end, and you have the lower lake at the northern end. One of the things we have noticed here is that because there is a massive amount of quiet, secluded moorings, you do have to make sure you've done your shopping in advance. There's only really those three towns to do shopping in, with the possible exception of Kesh on the lower lake. So one of the places you've got to go and visit in Enniskillen is Tickety Moose. This appeals to the child that's in all of us and it's a family run business that's been producing homemade ice cream for as long as most people in Enniskillen can remember, so they told me. And we went in here and we had a bit of a feast I must admit. What you see on the table here, well that was really only the tip of the iceberg. So my favourite pub in Enniskillen has got to be Blake's of the Hollow. I think the measure of any good pub is one that produces a good pint of Guinness and Blake's of the Hollow certainly does that. It's not a magnificent rainbow seeing us out of Enniskillen. So here is my question of the day for you. What is your favourite pub in Enniskillen. Oh, a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. A restaurant. Yeah. So, favorite pub or restaurant in Enniskillen. Connect with us and let us know in the comments below. And if you like the channel, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Yeah, and please share it amongst all your friends. And subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.